This video is going to be about the oil pressure gauge install. I installed this on my SL500 and I also installed an oil warning light so that if the pressures happen to go low there's going to be a warning light on the instrument cluster and I also have a gauge over here so I can actually look at the pressures coming from the car. And this is a modification I really recommend for everyone with these cars because I was pretty surprised to know that none of these cars actually come with oil pressure sensors anymore so if your oil pressure happens to go low uh, you'll basically blow your engine and there would be no warning light on the dash or anything. Um, that's something that I learned the hard way when I blew my engine on the E55. But since I don't want anything to happen to this car, I decided to put an oil pressure gauge in this one. And I decided to place the gauge right in this compartment over here because then I don't have to be looking at it all the time. I can just close it. And the car just looks like a factory SL500. There's, it doesn't really look like there's any modification done to it. But if I happen to have a warning light on the dash, then I can actually open it and then check my oil pressures. So I think it's convenient to have it this way. And you guys will actually be pretty surprised how easy this was to install. In fact, this whole thing just costed me under $100. So I'll show you guys how I installed this. And also finally decided what to do with the M113K engine that I bought. I'm deciding to keep that engine and rebuild it. Uh, but I'll talk more about that at the end of the video after I'm done with showing you guys all this um, oil pressure sensor stuff. So just to show you guys all the parts you'll need to install this, it's actually a pretty easy install. You'll just need an oil pressure gauge that will already come with an oil pressure sensor and also like some of the connectors that you'll need along with it. There's two types of gauges you can go with. One is this one which is an electrical gauge. The other one is an analog gauge that actually has a line that goes all the way to your engine. Um, I recommend this one because there's less chances of something going wrong because if there's a line going to your engine that line can break and uh, you can spill oil on all in your car. Um, that's why this is definitely the safer option to go with. Along with this oil pressure gauge, you'll need one of these things. This is just an adapter for um, converting these threads to a different size. Because most gauges you'll find will come in this size, which is an, a 1 8 NPT, but the size your car has, the size that Mercedes has for the um, oil outlet, is actually this size. It's an M12 by 1.5. So that's why you need this adapter. You can just search M12 by 1.5 to 1 8 NPT adapter online and you'll find a bunch of these. Other than that, you may or may not need um, this uh, extra line. This is just so. This is just because when I tried uh, fitting this um, sensor on my SL, there's not enough space between the engine bay and the fan shroud, so that's why I'll need to connect this extra um, oil line that will connect basically the outlet to this thing, which you'll later see in the video anyways. And just one extra thing that I'm connecting is this oil pressure switch. I'm just connecting it to wire in a light so that when the oil pressure goes low that I can have an oil warning light too other than just having a gauge in the car. And just one last thing, you'll need a Teflon tape just to um, tape all these threads when you're putting it in. But yeah, that's pretty much all you need. Now just to show you guys the location where you'll be connecting your oil pressure sensor, in the M113K it's actually located right here. So all you'll need is a ratchet and um, a 6mm Allen socket. And then you can just, um, and then you just need to unbolt uh, the screw. So this adapter can get screwed into the engine. And then I can put my gauge on this side. Uh, the, the final time I put it on, I'm actually going to put Teflon tape on it. And I'm also going to um, torque this bolt until this cop copper washer gets squeezed. And that's all for the oil connection. After that, you'll just connect the wire over here. Um, that's actually going to go to the gauge inside your car. And that's pretty much all there is to actually connecting one of these gauges. Now I'm going to show you how to actually do it on the SL which is slightly more difficult because it's inside a confined engine bay, but it's definitely not something too difficult. The only thing I had to remove for this job was just a radiator hose because that was in the way. I didn't even have to take the engine cover off. And then after that I just unbolted that plug that was in the engine and then I plugged this adapter into it. And then I torqued that adapter down. There's no torque specification that came in the instructions. They just said turn it until the copper washer squeezes. So I guess that means just use common sense to how much you actually need. Now since my sensor couldn't be plugged in because the fan shroud was in the way, I had to use this um, oil hose that went to my connector. Before connecting these 1 8 NPT blinds, make sure to put Teflon tape on them, otherwise they'll leak. After bolting the line and everything together, I pretty much just ended up with this. I was using that T over there to connect one side to the oil pressure switch and the other side to the oil pressure sensor that's going to go to my oil pressure gauge. When I bought the oil line, that T actually came with the lines. So that was a bit of a convenience not having to buy a T separately. After that, I just started the car and I made sure there were no oil leaks because this is pretty much everything you need to do oil related. And after that, it's just um, basically just connecting the wires. There's only two wires I needed to connect for now. One wire going from my oil pressure sensor to my oil pressure gauge and then the other wire going from my oil pressure switch to the instrument cluster to light up a warning light 
whenever the oil pressure is low. Once the wires were connected I decided to put these sensors underneath this plastic cover that was in the engine bay just to make it a little more hidden. I just wire tied it in place, I guess that was good enough to just keep it in place and I liked how discreet everything looked, you couldn't really tell if there was something going on. After that I had to disassemble my interior so I had to remove this panel that sits on top of the driver's side footwell. We're passing the wires inside the car, the proper way is to, there's a rubber underneath the fuse box, all the wires are actually coming into the car from there. But since that's a really difficult place to get to, what I did was I just passed the wires from the rubber where the steering column is passing through. That's actually a really easy place to pass the wires through. Once the two wires were passed inside the car, next I had to make the connections for my oil pressure gauge. These are actually pretty simple. There's only three wires that needed to be connected to it. One is a wire for positive 12 volts, the other one is for ground, and the third one is for the signal coming from your um, oil pressure sensor. And the blue wires on top of the gauge, they're for the lights, they're to light the gauge up. So if you want to use that feature, you can just connect them to one of the light bulbs in your car. So whenever you turn on your lights, your uh, gauge will also light up at the same time. Now for giving the gauge 12 volts, you have to connect it to a switched source. So the 12 volts aren't always being supplied. They, always, they only get supplied when you turn your ignition on. I took the switch 12 volt supply from this place which was right behind your uh, where your parking brake pedal is located if you trace right behind there there's these four connectors and one of them actually supplies a switch 12 volts so I just took that red wire from there for the ground there was actually a location right behind the instrument cluster where there's a lot of ground wires connected so I took the ground from there I had to remove the instrument cluster later on anyways because I had to connect that oil pressure warning light I decided to connect my oil pressure gauge in this compartment right above the air conditioner vents and to remove it there's these two screws that are all the way at the back of this compartment you just remove the screws and the whole thing just gets pulled out. And I was planning to mount the oil pressure gauge inside this but the problem is that it's a bit too tight the oil pressure gauge wouldn't actually fit inside this so I'll need to painfully cut this from the top and then uh, put the oil pressure gauge in that way. So after quite a lot of cutting with a Dremel and an angle grinder, I finally managed to fit the gauge inside. I had to cut from here and then I um, mounted the two bolts over here. And I had to cut the axis off too because it was getting too long. And I also had to cut from underneath because, well the gauge is a bit too big for this compartment. But I've just managed to make it fit. The letters still aren't fully visible, you have to look like from a slightly lower angle to see the whole thing. But I think it's still a pretty good fit. I couldn't have taken it any more lower because there's this uh, metal thing going from here so um, that's why I couldn't center the gauge in the actual um, compartment but I think it's still pretty good. Once the gauge was actually mounted I just took this black foam that I had and I covered up all the sides and everything just to make it look a little neater. And once that was done that was pretty much everything for the gauge and next I had to wire my oil pressure warning light. I have the instrument cluster out now and I was just trying to find the pin that goes to this light bulb that I need to light. It's one of those extra light bulbs that's not used in my car. It's for the hydraulic damper. But since my car doesn't have that feature, this light does nothing at all. So I already traced the wire. You just need a multimeter to trace uh, these extra wires. So just put it on continuity and then you can put one probe here and then like probe it through all the connections. And then you can find which uh, pin it's going to. And then you can just connect the wire from there to your oil pressure switch. But you first have to make sure that that wire is like it activates the bulb when it's at ground because because the oil pressure switch is going to supply a ground to this light bulb it's not going to supply 12 volts so you have to make sure the other side of this is actually going to 12 volts and then whenever the oil pressure falls low it will turn this pin to ground and the light will basically turn on and that's all i'll have to do i was thinking of using the oil pressure light before the oil pressure light is this one over here but the problem is that if i use that one the car already uses this light bulb to um, give you an oil pressure warning to give you an oil level warning when the oil level falls low so if I use the same light I will never know whether it's an oil level warning or oil pressure warning that's why I'm using this although it's the wrong symbol at least it will tell me that um, the oil pressure is low connecting my oil pressure switch for the warning light was the easiest thing ever because there was already a wire over there on that instrument cluster plug it was that green brown wire so all I had to do was cut this green brown wire and connect my oil pressure switch wire over here and then the lights started working after that. So basically yeah the circuit's already there all you have to do is just make the connection. So I finally put everything back together and now it's time to actually start the car and see if it works. So when I turn it on the 
oil pressure gauge turns on and now you can see this light this light didn't used to come on before so now because it's connected to that um, oil pressure switch that's why it comes on okay okay so there that light goes off now because the oil pressure is fine but if the oil pressure happens to go low that lights gonna come back on again that's the oil pressure warning light so my oil pressures tend to stay around 25 when the engine is warm uh, when I put it in gear this stay they go sometimes they go slightly below 25 but right now they're staying around right at 25 but when the engine revs high enough they stay around 50 so when I rev my engine they're gonna stay around 50 uh, so that's the oil pressures I'm seeing I'm not sure what the normal is for this car because there's not too many people that have oil pressure sensors in these cars but it's definitely something that I think is a good modification is a good thing to have in this car and what I really like about this is that it doesn't ruin the look of my car like I can just close this and no one's gonna know there's an oil pressure gauge in here and the thing is I don't have to be looking at it all the time because whenever the oil pressure will happen to come low there's gonna be a warning light at the dash and then I can just um, open this and actually have a look at the oil pressures so that was it for the oil pressure gauge and the oil pressure switch install you can go with either one of them either go with an oil pressure gauge or oil pressure switch as far as you keep an eye on them, either one should be good enough, but I went with both of them. Because I think an oil pressure warning light is something that's more obvious, so you obviously, like, that catches your attention whenever you see a warning light. And an oil pressure gauge tells you the full story, so it actually tells you the exact pressure going to your engine. So that's why I went with both of them, that they give you the benefit of both things. Anyways, getting to what I uh, decided to do with the engine. First of all, I have to say thanks a lot for all your comments and I did read through all of them. I didn't reply to all of them because I didn't get time to reply to all of them. But, but I have to say a lot of people gave me a lot of helpful suggestions about, um, someone also mentioned the chain, the oil chain rubbing against the block. That, that was a common issue on 113 engines. I also talked to a few mechanics myself and in the end the final decision I made was to rebuild this engine and not to bother finding another engine. So the next few videos that are going to be coming up are going to be about the engine rebuild. It's going to take a bit of a while because the connecting rod bearings I ordered, they're going to take about two weeks to arrive. And I do want to get the bearings first because I want to measure the clearances on the crank and everything. Because only then will I know for sure that everything is okay and then I can like proceed with the rebuild on the engine. And yeah, the mechanics I did talk to, they do say that they have also seen other M113K engines with spun bearings and things like that. So it seems like it is common to have oil issues in these engines and in fact some of the people I talked to they say oil issues are even more common in later models so like models after the M113 there's even more oil issues in those cars. So I think that's even more of a reason to monitor your oil pressures in these cars. Um, but yeah anyways that's everything for this video thanks a lot for watching and hopefully see you in the next video.